Oh hey! Welcome back to another episode of Miss Flips. It's been a while guys, I missed you. In today's video, we are making over this amazing dresser that a client of mine brought to me and she wanted me to take off all of the old factory finish and then do a really cool geometric pattern that I have never done before. So we are giving that technique a go today. So as usual, the first thing that we are going to do today is remove all of the hardware and get this piece nice and clean. My client actually decided to get rid of the mirror, so I went in and screwed out all of the screws in the back, but this did absolutely nothing. This mirror was going nowhere. After giving it some pulls and pushes, I decided to look underneath this piece here and see if there were any screws from the bottom holding it in place. And sure enough, there was. But unfortunately, this did not solve the issue. Whoever made this piece definitely ensured that this mirror was there to stay. So I cleared it with my client and we decided that the best method was just to cut it off with a saw. So I, I, I did it. I did that. Exactly that. But it unfortunately cut off a little bit of the veneer, so I am going to have to repair that. But until the time comes to repair that, let's move on to our sponsor of today's video. We are working with Stripwell, which is the famous brand that makes the QCS paint stripper that I've been hearing so much about. So we are going to be teaming up with them to remove this old finish. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you know that I love my eco-friendly paint stripper. So needless to say, I'm pretty excited to try this product. In the directions, it says to apply a thin coat, so I adjusted the nozzle to mist and then put a thin layer of that and let it sit for 15 minutes and then put a heavier layer on top of that as it says to do in the directions. Keep in mind that whenever you're dealing with anything, whether or not it is eco-friendly, make sure to use a mask, especially if you're spraying, because that stuff is going into the air and you are inevitably going to breathe some of that in, unless you're wearing a respirator. So always keep safety in mind first, regardless of what the label says. So after following the instructions and applying a significantly thicker coat, I let it sit for a couple minutes and then tried out scraping a little corner of it, but unfortunately I was a little too hasty and didn't let it sit for the recommended amount of time. But even so, it still removed a good amount of the finish, but I decided not to rush it and just applied a little bit more to that corner that I stripped. Look at the finish just dripping off. It is literally melting off of the piece and I have never experienced stuff that works this well. I typically use Smart Strip and don't get me wrong, I love Smart Strip and I think that it is a great product, but even with that product, I do not get the results that I do with this. I have never seen a paint stripper work this fast and this well. I am literally scraping off all of the tint, all of the stain, all of the finish. As you can see, the stuff that I'm scraping off is a really dark color which is all of the stain that they put onto the wood and it's just all coming off. <laughs> Another awesome thing about this product is that if it ever does dry out, all you have to do is just apply a little bit more and it'll come right off again. And in all of these little corners and details, I just went in with a steel wool, like one of those really fine steel wool brushes, sprayed a little bit of the stripper on there and just scraped all of that finish away. I didn't even have to wait for it to sit a little bit. I just sprayed it on right then and there and scraped and it just melted off. It's <laughs> genuinely shocking. <laughs> Now, when I got to the drawers, this is when I was hit with a little bit of surprise. Look at what I uncovered. This is what was underneath that old finish, an amazing burl wood. And once everything was dry, I was able to sand down with a 220 grit and I didn't even have to do 
basically anything. I was putting so little effort into it just because the majority of the finish had already been scraped off by the stripper. For this upper piece though, I unfortunately ran out of the QCS before I was able to get to it, so I ended up having to go in with my sander and remove the finish the old fashioned way. I started with a 60 grit to get all of the finish off and then I went in with a 120 and then moved up to a 180 just to make everything nice and smooth. To repair the damage that I did with the saw, I went in with some Bondo and mixed in the hardener and then applied it to the missing veneer areas where it was uneven from the rest of the surface. Once this first coat of Bondo dried, I made sure to go in there with a second coat just to make sure that there were no empty holes or crevices that were left unfilled and that it would just be one solid piece of Bondo on top of here. Now that the bondo was drying, it was time to get this big piece nice and clean so I can get started with the design elements. I started off by vacuuming the entire surface and then wiping it down with a damp rag. To do the design on the front of the piece, I needed to temporarily reassemble the piece with the doors on it so that I could make sure that all the lines lined up perfectly. So I taped off all of my hardware so that I wouldn't get any paint on them. This piece is actually going into my client's daughter's room, so I decided to sit down with her and come up with a design that we both liked. And if you couldn't tell, she is thrilled. But once the design was complete, it was time to get to work. So I don't have one of those cool compass tools to draw circles, so we're opting in to use pot lids and random things from inside the house to make these circles. I thought that it would be easier to place the circles first, that way I could make the shapes and design around them, knowing that they're kind of like anchors to where the shapes need to be. Since I'm not dealing with a perfectly flat surface, I found that it was easiest to make sure that there was a lot of slack on one side and then use my other hand to flush it into every crease. That way the majority of the paint wouldn't bleed through the edges of the tape. Since I'm using about six different colors, I opted for these little sample size containers of paint, and this was a huge money saver, especially considering that I'm probably not going to use a lot of these colors again, and I was still able to get a nice even coat with this minimal amount of paint, and I even had a little leftover for touch-ups. For the interior and exterior of these circles, I found that a round brush was the best to get this rounded shape, surprise, surprise. But if you're gonna try doing this technique yourself, I highly recommend just taking it really slow, take your time and do not rush this process because it can easily get really messy and you can get out of your shape very easily. So take your time, breathe and uh, be patient.
Filling in this shape right here, I was pretty impatient and I decided not to sand down the line that was left behind by the tape. But after this coat dried, I decided to go in with a 400 grit sandpaper and sand it smooth and that fixed this line here that you see. And so yeah, if you ever run into this problem, just take some sandpaper to the edge there and smooth it out. Once the entire pattern was done, it was time to remove the tape and get these doors back off of the piece so that I could apply the top coat. For the top coat, I decided to use an oil wax finish, and to apply that, I just really like all of my pieces to be separate. That way there's no buildup and I don't get any wax or oil onto the hardware itself. To apply it, I'm just working with an old t-shirt and I'm going in small little circles and then wiping away the excess once I let it sit for a little bit. And let me tell you, I was uh, pretty, pretty gushing over this wood grain here. It was absolutely amazing to uncover this under all of that old finish. I cannot believe that this was what was under there. <sighs> it's beautiful. But anyways, after letting it sit for a little bit, I went back in and did a second coat over the entire thing and once again making sure to wipe it down smooth after applying it. Applying the finish to these drawers was by far my favorite part of this process. It was just so amazing to see this wood and paint come to life and the color combo, ugh, gosh, I couldn't have asked for a better wood to go with the paint that I did.
After applying the oil, I went in and painted all of the edges of the drawers just to make sure that it had a really nice finished quality to it. And the reason I decided to do this after applying the oil was because it's a lot easier to wipe off if you make a mistake if the oil is on first. These little edges are really hard to get perfect, so just like this, I had a little bit of a smudge, but it was super easy just to wipe away and make the line nice and crisp. But anyways guys, we are coming to the end here. I hope that you enjoyed this video. This process was one of my favorite yet. So if you want to see more, make sure to like, subscribe, and do all those things so that we can stay a happy flippin' family. And until next time guys, stay flippin'.